Good morning, everybody. We're here in Winnipeg, loading up some lumber. It's gonna take us down to Lakeville, Minnesota, which is southern Minneapolis, St. Paul, just south of the city there. And we'll probably deliver that in there tomorrow and see what they have for us after that. I was supposed to pick up some glass, but apparently they needed a flatbed and I have a step deck behind me. So they might have to find me some other fancy freight to haul. They said they'll take care of me, so they'll find something for me. I'd like to get some miles in. I mean, I get paid by the load. I get paid percentage, right? So miles don't always mean the most to me. I like to see how many nickels are attached to the load. That's what uh, means a lot more to me than the miles attached to the load. Sometimes you can, you know, have a 2,000 mile load that pays less than an 800 mile load, depending on what the freight is but I need to keep the truck moving. This truck has been uh, nickel and dime in me this year so far. And uh, we're just gonna hope and pray for good things to come in the future. So as soon as this truck in front of me here moves, I'm gonna move into his position and uh, they're gonna start loading me up. We're gonna tire down and head south. This is a familiar route within Southern Winnipeg that I'm pretty familiar with. Bishop Grandin. Driven up and down here countless times when I lived in the area. My sisters both used to live in the area too in some of these apartment buildings off to our left. 500 meters, turn right on. St. Mary's Karen? Road, RTE 52. Karen, you don't know Winnipeg like I do. No, I'm gonna keep going, we're gonna take Lage down. Why would I take St. Mary's down? Then you gotta go all the way back down there, down on the perimeter yet. Bishop takes us right to Lage. No GPS understands Winnipeg. You gotta live here to understand the road systems. They don't make sense. They're starting to, like the new developments, they're starting to make a little bit more sense. But this city was like seven or eight, 10 different cities that all sort of merged into one at one point. And none of them communicated with each other until that point. So they all sort of built their own, built their own road systems and once they sort of bumped into each other, they oh, I guess we gotta figure out how to connect these things now. So, <laughs> Winnipeg's an interesting city. No freeways or anything running through it like a normal city. That would have required planning from the beginning. Winnipeg's not about that life. This is uh, Dakota Street. My first job was uh, delivering pizzas. Well, my first one delivery job. Turn right on St. Anne's Road, RT 115. Now you want me to go down St. Anne's? I can understand that logic, but it's still slower because St. Anne's is 60 kilometer an hour all the way down to the, to the perimeter. Bishop is 80 kilometer an hour up to Lage, which is 80 kilometer an hour. I don't want to go down St. Anne's. I don't trust you, Karen. Any other city makes more sense. In 500 meters, turn right on St. Anne's no. Road, RTE 115. This road has also taken a beating since I lived here. This road was not that bad when I lived here. I think they had just redone it. Now look at this thing. It's a little bit of TLC, a little bit of love and attention. I've noticed though that they have a lot more walking paths in the area. We go off to our left over there. A lot of nice walking paths that were not here when I lived here. Not that I was interested in going for a walk when I was like 18, 19. I was much more interested in other pointless, useless things to waste my time on. Got all our paperwork in Continue order. Continue on this road for nine kilometers. So we got loaded in Winnipeg, went back to our own yard, grabbed the paperwork I needed, so it's all clear for the border. Now I'm headed, because of weight restrictions, I've got to come up through the perimeter here to Highway 75. Still got their spring weight restrictions on the road, so I can't go on every road, especially when I'm fully loaded with lumber like this. It's about 771 kilometers to go. About eight hours of driving, 500 miles or so, just under 500 miles. Like I said, just south of Minneapolis from here.
always like to start the day with full tanks of fuel. Usually I end the day with full tanks. But this time when I went home, I got a little lazy. Here's the load. A little windy, I'll try to keep you out of the wind. Wow, still a lot of water out here. Just cruising down Highway 79. It's still flood season, I guess. I'm glad we live on higher ground. The river's just off to our left again. We're headed south. This road's gonna turn into I-29 in about 20 minutes in the US. Taking down some lumber for somebody near Minneapolis. Somebody down there wants to build something. I got some wood for them. I'm gonna bring it to them so they, so they can build it. I want all of you to keep building stuff, okay? Keep building stuff, keep doing stuff. Gives me something to do. Man, that's a lot of water. Wow. This is all farmers' fields here. Man, I bet the farmers are hoping to get out there soon and start seeding. Crazy. Every year. Every year. So we'll see how far we get today yet. I'd like to get as close as I can down to Minneapolis, but we won't get all the way there. We'll, we'll go until we get tired. Well, we're down here in the U.S. of A. right now. America, United States of America. Look at it. Look at it. Doesn't it look so much different than Canada? Look at it. I can tell you one thing, the road looks a lot better, but that's the only difference I see right now. But It's very nice. Very, very nice. And notice how all the water is gone here? See, the water flows north in this region and we're headed south. So all that water that was down here a couple of weeks ago that I was showing you is now up north in Canada. Surging towards the uh, Lake Winnipeg, I believe. And then from Lake Winnipeg, it drains out down a bunch of rivers towards the Hudson's Bay and then into the ocean. And then it starts all over again. What a journey, what a journey. But here we are, looks like the farmers are getting their fields back pretty mucky over there still oh yeah oh dear very mucky very mucky indeed they're gonna have to wait a few weeks before they seed them guessing but I've noticed further south down in central Illinois where we were at last week farmers were already on the field seeding seems pretty early but I'm, I'm used to I guess later seasons because we live up a little further north so gotta wait a little longer yeah the farmers will be itching to get out there I'm sure they're all Pulling their air seeders out of their out of their big garages, out of their barns, whatever you call those things. Air seeders out, you know, stretching them out, making sure they all work properly, make sure they're all tuned up, ready to go. Getting the old four-wheel drive versatile going, right? Right? Some of you farmers down there, what are you doing? You getting on the fields already or what? Getting excited? Give her, bud. Go to town, have fun. Rothsay, did you see that sign? our common stops on our first night. I'm gonna be pulling in here and finding a spot to park and calling it a night. It's only about, uh, well, this is about five hours from where we started. So this is, my first day is usually a little, a little tiring on the road. I don't know. I get used to being at home very quickly. There she was. Oh, it's full today. Oh, wow. All right, okay, well, we'll figure this out. Wow, it's not usually this full at all. Well, if we have to, we'll go over to Fergus, uh, past Fergus Falls and uh, park at the Big Chief. It looks like my spot is still open right here though. Well, we've got our spot. I've set up my bed. This is where I live, for those of you who have never seen my channel and have never seen a trucker's sleeper before. This is my home. Got a little TV there, got a second bed up there in case the wife wants to come along with me. Then I sleep up there and she gets the comfy bed down here, naturally. <laughs> and uh, oh, now I'm at home. 
a second ago I was at work there. Now I'm now I'm at home. So the commute is pretty bad, uh, pretty not bad, pretty good. Uh, not much traffic on my commute, but I kind of like it. Kind of like it. I'm gonna go to bed here now. Thanks for joining me today. Short little day, but tomorrow will be a bit of a better day. Uh, we got to go deliver this lumber and uh, head towards our reload, which we don't know what it'll be yet, but we will find out tomorrow. So don't forget to join us. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you then.